Hi. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a problem from section 1.7 of the Mathematics in, of Investment and Credit, 6th edition by Samuel Broverman. It's about real rates of interest or real rates of re return, which means inflation adjusted. Now, in this section, there are no problems that are marked with an S. There are no old exam problems, but it's still something you should know for actuarial exam 2 anyway, so it's still worth doing. Find the inflation adjusted or real rate of interest or rate of return. I did modify the problem a little bit. So if you happen to have the book, you'll see this is modified. We're going to suppose for the coming year that inflation is forecast at an effective annual rate of 0.15 or 15%. So what does that mean? That means for um, a bucket of typical goods, you might say, the prices on average will go up by about 15%. So if something cost $100 at the beginning of the year, it's going to cost $115 at the end of the year. Another way to think of that is your buying power has gone down when we have inflation. We're going to find the corresponding real rate of interest. Whenever you hear the word real, in terms of inflation, it means inflation adjusted. We are going to take inflation into account. For the coming year, in two cases, it's only the second case that's actually in the book, but I wanted to do in this other case as well. When your investment has an annual interest rate of 20% in case one and an effective annual interest rate of 10% in case two. Again, case two is the case that is actually in the book. All right, now there's a formula for the real rate of interest or real rate of return, but I would encourage you to think about this kind of problem without bothering to memorize the formula. Uh, you can think of it in terms of you got a certain investment amount at the beginning of the year, let's say 100 to keep it simple, and in case one, you're going to grow by 20%, so the future value of that is going to be 120. And in case two, it grows by 10%, so the future value is going to be 110. So your money, in a nominal sense, has grown by 20% in case one and 10% in case two, but because of inflation, prices, generally speaking, going up by 15%, your buying power has not necessarily gone up. Let's say you've got an item that costs $100 at the beginning of the year, or $100, i will just say, instead of dollars. At the beginning of the year, since you had $100 to invest, you could buy that item. The end of year cost for that item, assuming it's following the rate of inflation, is going to be $115. So in case one, you can still buy it with some money left over. And in case two, your money, even though it's grown in a nominal sense, the buying power has gone down. You cannot afford this item anymore. So as far as a real or inflation-adjusted rate of interest, in case one, you've got five left over. You can buy this 115 item with five left over. That amount left over as a percentage of the year-end cost of the item is a measure of how much your buying power has gone up. So that's going to be 5 divided by 115. That's about 4.35%. That's your real rate of interest or real rate of return in case 1. In case 2, again, your buying power has gone down. You can no longer afford this item. Your buying power has gone down essentially for that item by five. So the real rate of interest or real rate of return is going to be negative five over 115, which should then be about negative 4.35%. So those are the answers to the problems. There is, a, like I said, a formula for these things. It's written like this. I sub real is I, the nominal rate of interest for your investment, minus R, the uh, effective annual uh, rate of, uh, excuse me, effective annual rate of inflation, divided by 1 plus R. So in case 1, this is going to become uh, 0.2 minus 0.15 over 1.15, 0.05 over 1.15, which is the same thing. And in case two, it's going to become 0.1 divided by, or minus 0.15 divided by 1.15, 1 
negative 0 0.05 divided by 1.15, which will be the same thing that we got up here. Okay, so yes, you can use this formula, but if you just think about it in terms of how much your buying power has gone up or down relative to the year-end cost of something that originally cost 100, um, that might be a better way to think of it instead of trying to memorize a formula.